<laughs> Welcome to the examiner's report for pre-tutorial 1. I know many of you have a lot of anxieties over pre-tutorial or over the pre-tutorials in general uh, because you, some of you say, oh, so difficult, so difficult, right? And so, and, and, and it's, since it's an uh, open uh, prose format, uh, it's so open and then some of you are very wor worried about how you're doing, okay? So let me tell you the, uh, that we've graded very leniently, especially since this is the first assignment, okay? So that we, and, and, and then I want to use this as an opportunity to teach you how to do better. Uh. Not, not, not just for this module, but uh, modules in general. Uh, after all, this is G-E-T, right? G-E stands for General Education. Ah, okay. Now, let me explain the rationale for the pre-tutorial. I, mean, I actually did that in other videos, but in case you missed that, let me just explain, okay? Compared to just reading, uh, when you read, most of us, we read very passively, just scan, look, read, 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 read. then what happened? Uh, go in one eye, come, go out here, right? Or, or some of you go in the two eyes, then come out there, right? So, you the retention, the, 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 we don't work our mind, right? So, so the connectivity, the, the connections that we create in our mind is not there. Uh, the learning is not very effective. So, how to make it effective is a, a pre-tutorial exercise where you have to write something uh, or, or at least do an activity. When you engage in an exercise like this, you are a um, compelled to apply the things that you have learned. You're forced to uh, find what you have learned and see how to translate that into something that you can uh, work on to generate the answer. This is a very active engagement with the things that you learn and you create better connections in your head. And, and, and what I like about this is it goes very nicely with a uh, what's called a preemptive uh, pedagogical approach. What's the, the whole preemptive thing? You see, uh, if I tell you the answer and you didn't have any struggle at all, what's going to happen? You're like, oh, okay, law, okay, law, one year in, one year out, correct? But if you struggle a bit, then you understand what you don't know, you understand the difficulties that you have. Then when you come to class or when, when we explain things to you, your tutor or me, then what happens? Oh, you suddenly understand better. Wow, you struggle, struggle, struggle. Now you understand enlightenment, right? So, and then, and then for many of us, this thing that you learn, you remember because you struggle, you remember for life. Okay, so this is very powerful as a learning exercise, and because it is primarily a learning exercise, as long as you do the work and you don't write rubbish, we are very happy to give you marks. And if you write fantastically well, wow, what ah, we give you even more marks, alright? That's how the pre-tutorial works out, okay? Some of you complain, wow, why is the word count ah, 400 words, so many words to write? On the other spectrum, you have people who say, wow, why are ah, your word limit 600 words? So, I, 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 I'm trying so hard to squeeze everything in, okay? So let me explain. G-E, this module is what? G-E-T, right? So we know G-E stands for general education. T stands for what? Ah, huh? ah, huh? thinking ah. Wrong! It stands for thinking and expression. Ah, so this 400 to 600 words is an indicator of your ability to, to fulfill the thinking and expression components. Because uh, you can think, you cannot express, no use. You can express but you cannot think, then you are what? Fluff king, fluff queen, uh, right? Elo, uh, right? Okay, anyway. So, if you have difficulty hitting 400 words, what does this mean? It means that you did not think deeply enough about the matter. What we want at university is depth, not breath. I don't, wow, I, I whack this, I whack this, I whack this, I whack this, I whack this. Doesn't work that way. Talk, take one thing and really go deeply into it. Ah. Now, on the other side of the coin, are people struggling to keep within the word limit? So why 600 words? Because expression, one of the key things about being a, a, a good, uh, a person with good expression, clear expression, is to express succinctly. Yeah? Can you say what you need to say in as few words as possible? Okay. Ah, so this tension between thinking and expression forces us to be uh, to get depth in our work and to be succinct in what we say. So this is an exercise trying to train you to be, to be uh, to think and to express clearly and succinctly. La. So this is a very important training. Okay. All right. So now let's look at some student submissions. Okay, and talk about what they're doing right. Okay. Now the first submission that I'm going to show you. Okay. The first two submissions that I'm going to show you are from students. Are the only two students who scored. 
full marks for pre-tutorial one. Well done. Huh? So if you're one of the two students, don't be shocked if you suddenly see your assignment. Huh? Well done. Very, very proud of you. Okay. So let's have a look at this assignment. Okay. Uh, here we have the student. I'm, I'm not going to read out the answers. Uh, you can just pause and read the what, what the student has written. But let me just highlight to you. Here the student talks uses the median. Okay. But where the student performs better than, than most submissions, okay, most answers, is that the student actually explains uh, the median is used to give an idea of the typical intern's performance and account for deviations caused by outliers. In many, many submissions, uh, a lot of students just say, oh, here's the average, here's the median, whatever, right? Why median? Why average? No explanation, just nah. Right, so this one goes one step further and say, I use medium because I want to do this. Oh, very good, right? Not just doing this, here's the medium to give us a sense of what is the, the, the typical performance, right? But the student goes one step further. Here are some uh, strange trends that I noticed. Uh, this tells us that the student has been actually uh, really looking at the data and finding um, out all these outliers, anomalies. Uh, so, so here we have the description of all, all, all of it. Now, screenshots, screenshots, okay? Now, okay, here's one, one minor thing that the student didn't do too well. Uh. When you show a screenshot, uh, whether it's a table of numbers or a graph, uh, it's important to uh, at least put a caption so that when the reader reads it, the reader knows what on earth is going on. It's very important to say something, at least a short description, so that where, whoever is reading it can say, ah, okay, now I know this is what I'm supposed to look at. Because right now, there's so many things going on. What am I supposed to look at, right? So always, always caption. Blah, blah, blah. And then here, here here's what was interesting, okay? Now, um, this, this student goes one step forward. Uh, it's beyond just saying, now, nah, here's what I found in the data. The student adds this other layer, right? Interpretation. Because every time you have data, you always have interpretation, right? Even though you are looking at data, you are forming an interpretation in your head, okay? So a mistake many students make is they just say, nah, here's data, here's data, here's more data. Okay, but what is very important is the interpretation. Uh, I may not interpret it the way you did. So this is very helpful because the student is making explicit the interpretation. And we need to remember and recognize the fact that just because we're looking at numbers doesn't mean that's interpretation free. Uh. You see number in your head that is interpretation. So you need to flesh it out, make it explicit. Okay. So here the student is actually uh, fleshing out the interpretation. Here is the interpretation. Maybe they are not well liked, blah, blah, blah. Now, what makes this uh, submission the uh, a full mark submission? Because for many of us, we just say, oh, okay, Lord, it's just this. I, I think it's this, right? Or, or worse, you assert, oh, it's like that, right? How do you know you're right about that position, okay? In this case, the student showed, this student demonstrates, uh, I think I'm right, I might be right, but here are three different reasons, three possible reasons for why I might be right. Ah, so this person... Not, not just give one, but give three. So it goes many steps further. Shows to the reader, the examiner, that a lot of thought has been done. Now, some of you say, I also did a lot of thinking. Well, then, then put it down. Lah. That's the whole point of an essay, right? You, we, in FASS, uh, a lot of things we are looking at the process, your thought process. We are not looking at your answer. You know, your, your answer can be something fantastical or mundane. Lah. But if your whole thought process is not made explicit, we cannot understand the way you go through all this. You, you, you don't get the mark, lah, right? So, you, if you did all the thinking, tell us. Show us that you have been very, very thoughtful, okay? So here, we got three possible uh, explanations for why this interpretation should stand. Well done, lah. Now, notice uh, a strategy like this is very different from explanation. Uh, so this brings me to the point, uh, explanation is not the same as justification. When you explain, you assume that the matter is true, uh, is settled. So between you and me, we don't need to debate about anything. Huh? Very, very different um, strategy as compared to justification. Justification means you don't, uh, I'm not, I don't think you believe what I uh, have to say, so I need to prove to you that I am right. Now, this is very powerful because, some, because when we justify, we can also prove to ourselves whether we are right. It is a very different strategy, very different mental process. It's like a lawyer. Uh, 
go go to court, right? What comes fully prepared? I have a case to make, ah. Uh, here's evidence A, here's evidence B. Here I'm going to show you how this evidence proves this point. Here, here's how this other evidence proves this other point, right? That is justification. You assume that the other person doesn't believe you, right? And then you try to win the person over, convince, ah. Uh, Alright, so this is re really what the, the person is doing. You may not believe me, right, with this strategy. You may not believe that I am right, but let me tell you why I am reasonable. And even though you may not believe my final answer, you at the least you can do is say, I will agree with you that this is reasonable and I can see where you are going. Minimally, we can at least come to that. That is half the better one already, right? Yeah? So, okay, that's very important. Now, here's another very good point. Uh, Experience. Okay, let me make a few comments about why, why am I talking about this, okay? Whenever we want to rule something out, okay, we need to do more than just assert, okay? Because many a times when people rule something out, they just, this cannot because like that. Okay, maybe you might want to say a little bit more, huh? because why? We, remember, this goes back to the justification strategy. When you want to justify, you cannot, cannot assume that the reader or the person listening to you shares the same assumption. But some of you say, oh, but it's common sense. Or, no, no, no. Uh, common sense, okay, what is common sense to you is not necessarily common sense to someone else. Uh, or as one of my professors has said, uh, I remember this since year one because it was a very nice quote. Uh, common sense only appears common because no one dares to admit not having any, all right? So what is sensible to you may not be sensible to the reader. And in of the 800 submissions that we got, a lot of things that people take as common sense uh, is not common at all. Uh. So what is clear to you is not clear to the person. Especially since you're justifying, you need to make clear your assumptions, state why it is the case. You need to say more basically why your, this assumption is right in the first place, okay? Now, the other thing that, that I want to talk about is this, uh, uh, because part of the justification process, because one of the questions uh, stated in the grading rubric is, how do you even know you're right? Have you even checked whether you're wrong? So one strategy I propose is, well, maybe you can do it by elimination method, right? So you, you say, okay, you prove, you, you show why this one shouldn't be taken seriously, then you show this one, why, why you can cancel that out, then you cancel that out. So let's, say, let's use the four senior director's position, right? So what does this mean? Then you cancel three out, then you left with the, left, the last one, right? Can you say that therefore, because I don't have anything to say about the last one, the, we should therefore use the last one? No, right? Without positive justification for the last one, the last one is just a question mark. In fact, some students have uh, successfully demolished all four. And then they say, ah, here is my own step, right? So, right, it's very important. Just because you cancel things out, uh, doesn't mean that the last one is the right answer. The last one could also be the wrong answer, right? So, you need to show, give positive reason why this one has to be the case, right? Just, just a joke, uh, like, let, let's say for example, oh, I don't like you, why? Because you're ugly. Then, you know, not ugly means I like, right? No, right? I need a positive reason to like somebody, correct? Alright. <laughs> okay. Alright. Now, here is what we call a nuanced understanding. Because here, the student is acknowledging problems with using this measure, right? And the person is, uh, uh, one wrong strategy that a lot of students use is they recognize their problems and then they just sweep it under the rug. Oh, I know a pro this is a problem. Here are some problems about it. Uh, yeah, but actually it's not, not, it's not an issue. That is wrong. Here is how the student manages to reconcile the thing, uh, uh, iron out the problem. Here, say, I know this can be an issue, but think about it reasonably. We can fix it. Uh. We can fix it through training, through mentorship, through experience. So that is something to worth uh, thinking about. Uh. Here, this is basically good uh, strategies that we can adopt. Uh, all right. All right. So now let's look at the, the other top scorer for pre-tutorial one. Again, here's another student who got full marks. Uh. What is this student doing right? I'm not going to read out. You can just pause the, the video and, 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 and uh, read, read everything. Now, let me just say something about this chart. This is a very, very clean chart. This chart is very clean, easy to read. Many students uh, just whack, 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 whack. So many things going on, very hard to read, right? This one is very clear. Huh? In fact, the, the charts have labels. Uh, in fact, not just that, there is a caption. Uh, so when I look at this, I understand immediately what is going on, right? Now, let's focus on how this student proceeds with question two. Huh? With question two, we need to justify our measure, right? Why are we using this uh, whatever measure that you want to propose to measure the performance of the interns? Huh? Because 
ultimately is a proxy measure. So there is an interpretive gap that we need to plug with our background knowledge, many of which are assumptions, right? So we need to at least substantiate, justify our assumptions. Uh. So here we have very, very good positive reasons. Uh. So here we have, uh, it would be desirable for the interns uh, to be capable of delivering results over the long term. That's reasonable, that's reasonable. Uh. So why, many of you say, oh, I, I got think of it, right? Very good. But many students never say these things. Yeah? So this is what I call making explicit your assumption. It was clear to you, but you didn't say it. Huh? This one it is clear, therefore it is more convincing because just in case, I may not even share that assumption, right? Okay, here now, the student is saying, is uh, arguing in support of uh, Mrs. Satisfaction, right? We go for the satisfaction scores because it tells us a lot, right? So. Uh, it is reasonable that, that if we go to hire somebody, we want it for the long term. And then we say that high, high sales can be achieved in an unsustainable way, right? Or maybe you can lose customers even. Ah, that's reasonable, right? So here we have an acknowledgement of a potential problem with that, that measure, right? That, that maybe some supervisors were self-serving, right? But then notice, uh, this student is saying, here the student is making a concession, right? I'm willing to take the risk and select the interns in accordance to the ratings rather than against the ratings, right? Because going against the supervisor's opinions might make these supervisors feel all resentful that their opinions were disregarded. Now, that is pretty sensible, isn't it, right? So, you see, this is how one of many, many, many ways in which we can reconcile tensions in the data that we see, yeah? Okay, so let me make one last point. Uh, for many, many students, what I notice is that uh, what you did was you make a constraint and then you say, okay, anyone above or below this average, we kick out and then uh, whoever left behind, we take the highest performer or whatever. Now, this is very problematic for several reasons. One, it tells me that, you may, it suggests that, firstly, you don't really know what you're doing because many, of, many people who did that don't really have a good reason for it. It's just, I'm trying to force my way to win. Yasuism, ah, I want this, I want this, I cannot get both, so I purposely force this constraint. Nah? Now, here is a very unique uh, solution which, wow, I, I actually, honestly, uh, I have not seen this uh, solution in other submissions at all, okay? So what we have is, the constraint is, anyone who caused a loss in customers is kicked out. And then, of those who didn't, of those who left behind, basically, people who gained customers, right, then we take the ones with the highest satisfaction scores. Oh, this one shows a lot of thought that went into it. Uh, it's not just, I kiasu, I want to win both ways. Uh, so this one shows a higher level of depth in that process. Uh. Okay, anyway, now there, there are 101 different things that we can talk about, but I hope that this explanation, this process, helps to give you deeper insights into how to write better, not just for pre-tutorials, but for other modules as well, okay? Now, okay, all that said, I want to thank my colleague, uh, uh, Mr. Isaac Tan. He's the one that did all the grading. Uh, so he graded all 800 of your assignments. He wrote individualized comments, feedback for every single one of you. And especially the weaker students, he spent a lot more time to write longer feedback to tell you how to improve. So if you have any questions or anything like that, please contact him. He'll be very happy to explain to you and help you. Um, anyway, you want to learn from us, we're very happy to help you learn. We you want to learn how to be more critical, we're very, very happy to help you learn that, okay? So come and talk to us, we're very happy to help you grow and improve. Huh? Okay, so all that said, I wish you all the best. See you around, bye!